In alhamdulillah wa salat wa salam Allah wa rasulullah. We are continuing with our series Keys to Living Islam. And this is one of the most important series that I teach. Because again, just because we say that we believe in Allah doesn't mean that we do. Remember, we talked about how Allah sent revelations to the people. Who are the people of the book? Allah sent the revelations to the Jews. They were the first people of the book. And then they chose to reject Allah, to disobey his commands. They violated the laws, the rules of Allah's book. So Allah cursed them and he replaced them. Who did he replace them with? The Christians. And Allah sent to them a book of revelations too. But unfortunately, they did the same thing that the Jews did. They violated the laws of Allah, rejected them, changed them. So they earned the curse of Allah too. And so then Allah replaced them with another people. And who are those people? Us, the Muslims. The Muslims, we are the chosen people of today. And we follow the final and the last book of Revelation, which is the Quran. Allah caused the Bible. Allah caused the Torah to be destroyed. That's why there is no authentic Bible on this planet. There is no authentic Torah on this planet. But the Quran can be traced all the way back to the time of the Prophet Muhammad and it's still the same. Nothing has been contorted. Nothing has been twisted. It's the final book of Allah. And everyone living on earth is supposed to abide by it. As our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whatever good was in the Bible and whatever good that was in the Torah, Allah put it in the Quran. So you want to learn about the Ten Commandments? It's all in the Quran. You want to learn about Jesus and Mary? Right there in the Quran. Jonah and the whale? Right there in the Quran. Solomon and David? Right there in the Quran. So the good that was in those books is right there in the Quran. And the Quran finalized and sealed everything. Because every prophet that Allah sent, they all came with the same message. Their message was to worship Allah alone. They had different rules, different uh, fickle regulations. For example, when the Jews continued to disobey Allah, that's when Allah took away things that they liked as a punishment. That's when Allah made it unlawful for them to eat shellfish. Unlawful for them, you know, to eat fat and all of that. It was a punishment. Not because these things were bad for you or, or dirty, but as a punishment. Well, when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came as the last prophet, he completed the mission of all the prophets who came before him. How did he complete it? By finalizing their missions. Everything that Allah made lawful today is good and clean. And everything that Allah made unlawful is bad and dirty. Nothing is a punishment anymore. Okay? In order to attain paradise, you have to live upon the way of Islam. Because Allah tells us he will not accept any other way. No other religion but Islam. Jesus was a Muslim. What does the word Muslim mean? Muslim means one who submits to God. Moses was a Muslim. He was one who submitted to God. Abraham was Muslim, Solomon, David, they all had the same religion, which is Islam. And what does Islam mean in English? It means living your life 
in total submission to Allah, which is God. Okay? So every prophet was Muslim. Their religion was the one and the same. It was Islam. If you want paradise, you cannot die as a Christian, as a Jew, as a pagan, as a witch, as a Buddhist. You have to be a Muslim. What does that mean? That means you have to believe that there is no God other than Allah and that Muhammad is his last prophet. And you have to have be living your life following the rules, the laws, the guidelines of his last and final book, the Quran, which includes thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal. See how all the prophets were the same? The same laws that Allah set for us Muslims today are the same laws and rules he had for Moses' peep followers and Jesus' followers and everybody else. Nothing's changed. Okay? So now today what I want to do is reiterate our purpose. We were all created to worship Allah. We were all put here on this earth to earn the reward of paradise. For those of us who don't earn the reward of paradise, you will earn the hellfire. And we can all learn from the father of mankind, the first prophet that Allah sent, and that is Adam. And we're going to talk about Adam today again. Adam, he was not only the first man created. He was not only the father of all mankind. But he was the first human Muslim. And he is also one of the greatest keys to practicing Islam. Why? Because his life is an example for us. His life is an example of how we were created to be tested. Just because we say we believe in Allah is not enough. Adam was tested in his belief. He is also an example as to how not only were we created to be tested, but we were also created to make mistakes. To make mistakes is to be human. We're not perfect. Even our prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, made mistakes. For example, when he turned his back upon the blind man, that was a mistake. When he told the people to not cultivate the date trees, the palm trees, that was a mistake. He didn't make mistakes in regards to worship. But being human, he, he made other mistakes. And that's why he used to tell the companions, ask me anything about the religion. And I can give you the answer free from mistake. But when you ask me about your daily affairs, understand I'm human like you. And I don't know it all. And I can tell you something that can be a mistake. Okay? Well, Adam was an example of that too. You know, to be human is to make mistakes. The key is to recognize your mistake. Admit it and then turn back to a law. That's the trial. That's the test. And when we look at Adam, alayhi salam, we learn from this. Because his life represents the ideal relationship that man should have with the law his life also represents shows the jealousy that a law has for us and by the way guys a law is jealous jealousy belongs to a law a law tells us in the quran that he gets jealous whenever you worship something other than him Whenever you choose to obey something or someone over him, you make Allah angry. You make him jealous. Remember, uh, arrogance 
is Allah's cloak. Pride is his garment. And when you look at the story of Adam, you get to see all this play out. Okay. Adam, he was the first man created. Allah honored him. Allah showed the rest of the creation just how high a status Adam was by making the rest of the creation bow to him. But when Adam chose to disobey Allah, Allah humiliated him too by casting him out of paradise. Again, Adam was not created to live in paradise. Allah created him there, but he put him here on earth because it was always Allah's intention for us to earn paradise. But he allowed Adam, just like he allowed Iblis. And by the way, guys, Iblis is the father of the jinn. That means he was the first jinn created. Allah allowed Adam, the first man, and Iblis, the first jinn, to live around, to walk amongst the angels in paradise to show that he had honored them above the others. But when they both disobeyed him, Allah cast them out to the place where he always intended for them to live, to work, to earn. Does everybody understand that? And after Allah cast Adam out onto earth, Adam felt very bad. He went through a lot of grief because he didn't want Allah to be angry with him. In fact, when Adam and his wife Eve were cast here on earth, they spent a thousand years begging Allah to forgive them of their sins. Does everybody understand that? So Adam and Eve, they were cast on earth and went a thousand years feeling guilty and bad for what they had done because they loved the law. They didn't want to be in, in the dishonor of him. Whereas Iblis, he rejoiced when Adam was cast out. He was cast out too. But he was happy that he succeeded in casting out Adam. And again, it was a law's plan for Adam to live here on earth. And here's the evidence. I told you guys on the quiz, you had the evidence right. You just didn't put the other information in there. Allah tells us in the Quran, in the interpretation of the meaning, I am going to place mankind generation after generations on earth. Allah made this statement years before he even created Adam. Okay? So, this is all part of Allah's plan. Everything that happens in life happens because Allah willed it to. Because Allah planned it to. What happened with Adam was part of Allah's plan. What happened with Iblis was part of Allah's plan. What happens with you and me in our daily lives is part of Allah's plan too. Shaitan was a pawn. But what made Shaitan different than Adam is, Adam felt bad about disobeying Allah. And Adam repented. Allah ended up forgiving Adam. But Iblis never repented because he never felt bad. To this day, he doesn't feel bad. And that's why he is damned forever. And again, guys, why was Iblis angry? He was angry of Adam and jealous of him because Adam was a higher status. 
When Allah created Adam, he told Iblis and the angels to bow down. The angels bowed down to Adam. But Iblis refused. And that's why Iblis was, is jealous of us to this day. But just like Allah kicked out Adam and told Adam to make his life here in this world, Allah had forgiven him of his sin. He had forgiven his wife Eve too. When Adam and Eve went a thousand years suffering, that wasn't because Allah didn't accept their repentance. That was because they felt bad. And this happens to so many of us. You know, we repent from our sins. But instead of moving on, we continue to beat ourselves down. That's what Adam did. He beat himself down for over a thousand years, even though Allah had forgiven him. And we have to stop doing that as humans. You miss out on so much. Understand, as the prophet told us, by he in whose hand is my soul, if you did not commit sin, Allah would wipe you out of existence and he would replace you with someone who would commit sin and ask Allah for forgiveness. Okay? So that's the difference between Iblis and Adam. They both made the same mistake of disobeying Allah. But when Allah cast out Adam on earth, Adam was quick. He turned to Allah and repented. Iblis never did. But what made life hard for Adam was he couldn't move on. He still kept beating himself down for over a thousand years. We can't do this, guys. Listen to what Allah told Adam. When Allah saw Adam beating himself down, Allah said in the interpretation of the meaning, Oh, Adam, do not be sad because I told you to come out of paradise, which I created for you and your offspring. Oh, Adam, you used to come to me like a king comes to another king. Today you come as a servant who comes to his king. Oh, Adam, do not be discontent because of your slip up. Because you are human and human beings make mistakes. And perhaps it is that you dislike something, Adam, that is good for you. Allah told Adam that because he saw Adam beating himself up over his slip up. How many of us do that? Yes, you made a mistake. You fornicated. Okay, but didn't you repent? Remember, guys, every time we turn back to Allah and ask Allah to forgive us, he wipes the slant sin away. As long as you were sincere, as long as you felt guilty, as long as you were determined to not do that sin again, Allah says, I will forgive you. Adam was sincere, but he couldn't move forward. He kept beating himself up. Don't do that. You're human. Allah loves for us to recognize that he holds our final return. Allah loves for us to recognize that there is an entity greater than us known as he. Allah loves for us to say, oh Allah, forgive me, I'm sorry. So we have to move on, guys. Let it go. Just let it go and move on. I tell you guys all the time, whatever happened in the past, let it stay there. Once you repent, you leave it there and move forward. Don't think about it no more. I don't want to hear what I did in the past. So what? I don't care 
what I did in the past. It's over. It's a done deal. I've repented. I'm moving forward. If you focus on the past too much, guys, you lose yourself. You lose out on other good deeds. You lose out on life. Move forward. Let it go. Let it go. This is what we have to learn to do as Muslims today. So thus we learn from our father Adam that as humans we were created to make mistakes. We were created to sometimes make bad choices for ourselves. But guess what? Allah will not hold those mistakes or choices against us unless we fail to seek his forgiveness. Mankind holds grudges. Allah doesn't hold a grudge. As long as you repent, he does not hold a grudge. It's when you become like Iblis and don't repent that he holds a grudge. We also learn from our father Adam that Shaitan has no power over us unless we give it to him. All Iblis can do is tempt us. But he doesn't have the power to make us choose his suggestions. We make that choice. And we have to stop giving that power to Shaitan. And also we learn from all of this with Adam. That there's hope. There's always hope. Understand Allah is on your side. The simple fact that Allah chose for each and every one of us to be Muslim. That says a lot. He made you Muslim. That says a lot. That means he wants the best for you. All you have to do is honor him. By choosing the things that are best for you. And again guys. Allah didn't make us angels. If he wanted to he could have. Instead he chose through his wisdom. To make us different. And our Lord is a jealous Lord. He wants the best for us. While expecting us to honor him. And he wants us to know that unto him is our final return. So repent. It's all about turning back to Allah and repenting, guys. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to commit sins. It's best to be human. But how long are you going to live in that sin? How long before you turn back and say, oh, Allah, forgive me. And then after you do it, leave it there. It's gone. It's over. It's a done deal. I'm moving forward. I don't want to think about it no more. I'm not going to talk about it no more. It happened. Let dying dogs be dead. He, it's over. Move forward. Focus on doing better things that are pleasing to Allah. Don't let the past hold you back. Don't let the past keep you from moving forward. Don't let Shaitan have his victory over you on the day of judgment. Remember, guys, when the people of the hellfire are being led to the fire, Shaitan will turn and face them. And he will say, do not blame me. All I did was suggested. You chose. You chose to follow me. Think about that. Okay, we'll stop right here for today. Tomorrow we're going to continue. And again, this is a lot of information. It's basic tall heed. But believe it or not, most Muslims living on this earth don't understand these principles, these cons, this concept. This is basic tall heed. So we'll stop right here. If you have any questions or comments, inshallah, you can type them on the screen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdi.